Hello math learners! Have you heard the saying, nothing is constant in this world except change? For sure you do. But do you know, in mathematics, there is a topic that focuses on constant and change. And that is all about variations. Now, if you don't know anything about this topic, then I suggest you finish and watch this video. But before anything else, hit that subscribe button and notification bell for you to be updated of the School Clear Math videos just like this. Hello Math Learners! Welcome to another session here in Math Learning with Sir Ash. This is still your free access math teacher Ash and today we're going to discuss the most essential learning competency based lesson for quarter 2 of the grade 9 mathematics which is all about variations. Now the question is what is a variation? Variation is defined as the relationship of the change of one quantity to the other quantity or quantities. It means that if there are two variables, when you change one variable, how does it affect to the other variable? Now, if there are many variables, how does it affect to other variables? So, that is what variations is all about. Now, there are four different types of variations that are being introduced in the grade 9 competencies. And these are the direct variation, inverse variation, joint variation, and the combined variation. However, there is a fifth variation known as the partial variations, but that is not included in the competency for grade 9 mathematics. Now, we have four variations here. How are these related with each other and how do they differ with one another? The first two, as you can see, refers both only to two variables. While the last two here refers to three or more variables. Now, what do I mean about variables? Variables are those letters that can be changed its value. Example, we have the X and the Y, the Z, or any letters that can be represented as any value. So for direct variation and inverse variation, we are just dealing with two. Okay? Now, for the joint and the combined, we will be dealing with at least three or more. Okay, so the question is, how do they differ with each other? For the direct variation, of course, it is said as direct because the relationship is direct. When we mean direct, when the x increases, the y also increases. When the x decreases, the y also decreases. So how do we represent that in an equation that is y is equal to kx? Okay, so it is direct. Now, how about inverse variation? Inverse variation, of course, is the opposite of direct. Some other books, it is said to be indirect variation. But um, for a global scale, it is known as inverse variation. It is the opposite of direct. So that means if x increases, y decreases. If x decreases, then y increases. So that is how they talk about the relationship of the two. So how do we show that in a mathematical sentence that is y is equal to k over x? Now, we are finished with the two. We have the other two here. This other two talks about at least three or more variables. So since there are three variables, let's just consider the letters x, y, and z. Okay. But remember... You can use any letters. But for this math tutorial video, let's just use the X, Y, and Z for the three or more variables. Okay, now, what is joint variation? The joint variation is basically like direct variation, except that we are talking about three, at least three variables. So how do we write that one? That is Y is equal to K, X, Z. We're in... The x and z are the two variables together with the k, and y is the dependent variable. So, when x and z increases, of course, y also increases. When x and z decreases, then y also decreases. Okay. And finally, we have the combined variation. Combined variation is named combined because it is the combination 
of the first two variations, the direct and inverse. Now, the question is, how do we write that in a mathematical sentence? That is, y is equal to kx over z, in which x and y are directly proportional, or they have the direct relationship, while z and y has the inverse relationship. So, as x increases, y increases. As z increases, the y will decrease. Okay? So, that is the relationship between the combined variation. So, again, two variables, direct relationship. One goes up, the other goes up. One goes down, the other goes down. Inverse relationship, two variables. One goes up, other goes down. One goes down, the other goes up. Okay? And then, joint variation, we have direct that is just considering three or more variables. And finally, combined variation, the combination of direct and inverse. Now, how do we know that a certain problem is direct, inverse, joint, or combined variation? Basically, we tend to observe statements in the problem or in the situation. So, what are these statements that we need to be careful? Okay, for direct variation, if you read or if you see the words varies directly or is directly proportional, then that is a direct variation. Of, for example, like this, y varies directly as x. y is directly proportional to x. Okay? Now, for the inverse variation, we use that statements or we observe the statements um, varies inversely. Okay. That's the key word. So, it could be um, is inversely proportional or varies inversely. So, if we read the statement here, that is y varies inversely as x. Okay? So, we, we just write the statements or we just translate the whole problem like this. But be careful with the letters, okay? Because if the statement is x varies directly as y, then if you translate that into a mathematical sentence, that is x is equal to k y and that is and those two are very different my dear math learners okay so be careful with the statement on which letter is being shown first okay now let us go here how does this applied in a situation so um, we will be observing the words jointly okay okay varies jointly so if we use this statement y varies jointly as x and z okay y varies jointly as x and z and finally for the combine we will not use the word combine but it instead we will be using a combination of the statements in the direct and in the inverse so how is that example like this y is equal to kx over z then we could say y varies directly as x and inversely as z. So, basically, um, the letter that is being written with the inverse, that will be the letter or the variable that will be, that will be placed in the denominator side. And the letter that is being directly considered is the letter or the variable that will be beside of your k. Now, for sure, you will be wondering, we are talking about different variables x, y, and z here. But we can see a letter that is very the same, which is k, right? Now, reminders, my dear math learners, k here is not a variable. k here is what we call the fixed value or the constant of variation. What does this mean? It means that when the change happens, we need to have a constant so that that constant will be applied to the other changes. Example, let's say you are in the market. The cost of 1 kilo of rice is equal to 50 pesos. Okay? So therefore, how much is 2 kilograms? 
Of course, that is 100. So, how much is 10 kilograms? Of course, that is 500 pesos. So, as you can see, the relationship here is as your weight increases, your cost also increases. So, that is an example of a direct variation. The question is, how do we get the constant? So, the constant here is very simple. As we know, this relationship is direct. So, therefore, if this is y is equal to kx or and then your y is dependent, so, of course, the amount is dependent to the number of kilos, right? So, therefore, this cost will be your y and then your weight will be your x. So, that is your weight. Okay. The weight of how many kilos? So, if we consider the given, that is k. We don't know the k, right? The weight is 1 kilo. The cost is 50. So, basically, if you, if you simplify this one, this is k is equal to 50. Right? 50. Now, let's try this scenario. Your k is 2. Your, your k is multiplied to 2, which is your weight. And then your cost is 100. Now, to solve for k, you divide both sides by 2. And the answer is still 50. So, as you can see, this is a fixed value. So, that is your k. But remember, my dear math learners, that in solving k, it will depend upon the given situation whether it is direct, inverse, joint, or combined. For the direct variation, you can solve the k by dividing y over x, or y to x. In the inverse, you can solve your k if you multiply the x and y. Now, how did I do that? Basically, it's just a matter of deriving the formula from its original translation. Okay? So, you divide both sides by x and solve in terms of k, this will happen. If you solve for k here, um, you use cross multiplication, you will have k is equal to xy. Now, how about here? In the joint variation, if we solve for k, then basically, you just divide y to the product of x and z. And here, if you want to solve for k, then you just multiply y and z and then divide it by x but don't you worry because we will have videos in each of these variations for you to understand the whole idea of how to solve the k how to know the equations and how to know the different scenarios and the word problems behind each variation okay okay so now let us talk about its graph the graph of the direct variation is represented as like this one. Of course, because as x increases, y increases, then it means that there is a constant increase. Regardless, if it, if it goes down, the same concept will happen. Okay? So the graph is like this. However, if it is inverse, then your graph will become like this. Now, for sure, you want to know the graph of this one. But since we are considering three variables or three or more variables here, we are talking about a 3D graph which has a y-axis, an x-axis, and a z-axis. But that would give you um, confusion. So, we will not talk about the graph for the joint and the combined variation. Okay? So, this is all about the overview about variations. What are the types and what are the things you need to have an idea first before going or before jumping to each variation and learning it. I hope this helps my dear math learners. And if you think that you have learned something about this one, I hope you can also put your comments or your inquiries if there is in our comment section below. This is still your free access math teacher Ash. And always remember, it is fun to learn mathematics if we are together learning. Thank you so much. God bless and keep safe always. Congratulations, math learners, for arriving to this part of the video. If you think that this video have helped you, click that like button. And if you think that this channel can change the way you see mathematics, do not forget to click that subscribe button and notification bell. Thank you.